Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name's Jason and I am the Cloud Gardener. <laughs> Today I'm going to take you on my first balcony tour of 2022. It's taken me round about a week to get the balcony sorted and the sun is shining. We are having a mini heat wave here in the UK. So without further ado, let me take you out onto the garden. <laughs> If there's one thing about me, I'ma wear my boots when I go on my balcony. Welcome to my cloud garden. My balcony garden is 18 floors up and I'm in the middle of Manchester city centre. And this is my first balcony garden tour of 2022. It's around about 7.30 in the morning and let me show you what the sunrise is like on the cloud garden. Well, you can't actually see the sun. It's reflecting onto the building and back onto the garden which means the garden gets a bit more extra sunlight every morning. There are several different areas within the garden and this side I focus on my herbs and also I've decided that this is where I'm going to start to grow my salads. Now because of the building opposite I know that I'm going to lose a couple of hours a day of direct sunlight. First, I was really disappointed and upset by this. However, what I have realized is that's probably gonna give me a little bit of shade on this side of the garden. And that means that I will probably be able to grow things like lettuce and spinach and lots of other cool weather crops early in summer, which I have never been able to do. So. I'm taking this inconvenience as a little bit of a gift. Now, on my herb tower, I've got all sorts of herbs. I've got some basil, parsley, lavender, a curry plant as well, and also some oregano and thyme. What I love about this is it's just next to my balcony door, so when I'm cooking, all I need to do is open up the balcony door, snip away, <laughs> and then I'm ready to cook. Now I'm going to use my brand new contraption over here <laughs> to grow my lettuce and some of my cool weather leafy greens. And these containers are quite deep so I might try growing some root veg in there as well. OGs to the channel know that I love to keep it real. I'm testing some products on the balcony garden and as soon as I'm convinced that they're legit, I'm going to do a video for you. The spinach that I've been growing all through winter is doing absolutely fantastically well. In fact, it's looking absolutely gorgeous. So good, I don't even want to eat it. <laughs> Does anyone else do that? I mean, what a mess. But here's the problem. It's getting sunnier and because it's directly in front of the glass, the heat's magnifying and what I don't want is for the plants to choose to bolt and go to seed. So I'm actually going to have to do a little bit of moving today and move this pot so that it doesn't get too much direct sunlight. One month on and the spinach is looking so glossy and delicious. Because it's slightly shadier in here, that should stop the spinach from bolting. I've managed to save one of my broccolis and I'm I brought it over into the shady area. That way, fingers crossed, it won't bolt and go to seed. But I also have a whole hanging basket absolutely full of weeds. And you're probably thinking, why would I do that? Well, if you guys have been following me for a while, you will remember Tracy, my bumblebee, who used to come up and visit me every single day. The very first plant that she gravitated towards were the weeds on the garden. So I decided that I'm going to have a whole basket full so that when a pollinator does come along, they will have a fresh supply of weeds. I also have a bumper crop of strawberries down here, but this little jungle round here is hiding a secret. Down here, I've got the very first of my rock pools. I found that having a water source on the garden really helps to attract wildlife. Now this here is one of my favourite brand new pond plants. It's called a Japonica flamingo and the colours on it are absolutely stunning. 
but I'm trying to not waste space on the balcony. So in all three of my water features, I'm growing watercress. Now, watercress is an old school classic, but that means that I am maximizing on the space in the garden and I can harvest the watercress and eat it and add it to my salads. pond as always is <laughs> one of my absolute favorite areas and as you can see I've got some new toys for the fish and the water is looking a little bit cloudy a change in water temperature seems to have uh, made them rather playful <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like I might be a fish daddy pretty soon <laughs> Around the pond, I'm growing some allium. I planted those bulbs in January and they are now shooting up. But I've also got some hollyhocks in there. Now, can you believe that these hollyhocks are around about two years old? I sowed them in 2020. Hollyhocks are biannual. So in their first year, they won't flower. They'll flower in their second year. So I am hoping, uh, wait, touch wood. I'm hoping that they will flower this year. I actually have, I think I've got three or four of them. And I've also got some fox gloves, so hopefully they'll be doing the same thing as well this year. The rice fish are now at full size. They were continuously eating all of the duckweed, so I had to incorporate some larger floating plants, including water lettuce and frog bits. There are two water lily rhizomes in the pond, and only one of them showed any sign of growth. This year both of them are growing, and this one is the first leaf of one of them. As part of my regular pest control, I have to pick up all of my pots and then check underneath them quite regularly just to find any slugs. And if you've been following me on Instagram, you'll know that I collect them all up and then take them down to the river. Here I've got some starship lobelia. Um, I was pruning it back and then I realised that there were two containers. So I took this container out and... <laughs> Guys, I've got worms and even more slugs. Like... Cha, I'll be running Animal Farm up here. Like, what is this? And you know what I'm like, I can't just throw them away. Now I'm going to have to keep them. And now I'm going to have worms up here on this balcony somehow. Every time I dug into an old container to swap things around, I would find that the compost was so dark and rich. Look at this. <laughs> so I actually have my own little helpers. Every year this garden surprises me. It's no wonder that these are doing so well. <laughs> Jeez. So I was just about to do some digging for my echinacea and who have we got here? <laughs> Are you serious? I began to find the worms at the bottom or underneath so many pots. I can only assume that one or two must have come in from one of the nursery pots. But why are there so many on my balcony garden? The answer soon became clear. It looks like the worms not only were thriving on the garden, but they were also breeding too. I was absolutely blown away by this discovery. Now that I found evidence of the worms, I now understand that the worms have been using the holes at the bottom of each container and moving along to different ones like a little highway. This has added in an extra layer into my own ecosystem and you know I would have been very very reluctant to introduce worms on my own because I didn't think that they would survive in the containers with this heat but it would seem that all throughout summer last year and throughout winter they've been multiplying and have really began to make this garden a home. <laughs> I 
I honestly cannot believe it. My balcony garden is proof that nature will always find a way. Whoop! Okay, let's get you somewhere safe. In addition to my newfound worms, I've seen the return of some bumblebees as well. I also have a number of pests. My number one enemy, aphids, are back in town. So I've had to reintroduce some ladybird larvae onto the balcony garden and they are slowly but surely taking care of business. Now, if you want to pick up some ladybird larvae and you are in the UK, check out the link in my description box where you can pick up your own. One of the stand-up features of the garden are the arches and although they look absolutely amazing and they look great with the lights on, they are not very practical. And if somebody was to ask me, should I get arches on my balcony, my response would probably be no. And that is because of the wind. Let me give you a fascinating example of this. So Tim, my favorite passion fruit, he's been growing horizontally along the garden. But as we follow his vines up onto the arches, you'll see that he's actually dropped his leaves. In fact, anything that is above the glass, he has dropped all of those leaves. And that is due to the wind. Now I've got two different varieties of passion fruit vines. Tim has got a yellow fruit, and then I've got two purple passion fruit vines. Now the purple passion fruit vines, their leaves are a lot bigger and they really suffer with wind damage and wind burn. So I've had to chop them back completely and I'm now just waiting on new buds to form for this year. This box is going to be full of my perennials. So this beautiful Gaylardia is from last year and as you can see she is going to burst into full bloom pretty soon. Now in my echinacea video that I just posted I planted this guy and also this one and in the video I did say that this one was looking a little bit worse for wear but I wasn't going to worry and I was right because if we get a little bit closer it's managed to push out a brand new leaf so although the rest of the plant has rotted away it is still alive. My window boxes are absolutely full of spring bedding and I've been really, really surprised this year by the bellis. They've taken over two of my window boxes and they just seem to be getting bigger and bigger. I've also got some giant violas and they're just so beautiful. But I will say that now that it's beginning to warm up, they are really beginning to become a little bit raggedy. <laughs> It's really important that as the flowers begin to fade that you deadhead them because that will encourage the plant to make more blooms. A while back in a previous video I dug up my window boxes and I took out and repotted the old begonias. I was just testing to see whether or not they would come back and would you believe they actually have? Who would have guessed it? I have one in the window box down the end of the garden and it is just bursting into life as well. <laughs> How beautiful is my lovely Miss Camilla. <laughs> You know, I've had her for around about two years and she has not flowered in those two years. This is her first year and I've got to say, she is in completely the wrong container. She should have one of her own. Um, and <laughs> I feel guilty now that I didn't do that a bit earlier. But her roots are so thick, they are actually like pythons. I did try to separate her ones and I just thought, oh, you know what, forget it. Um, she's not doing anything anyway, and this year she's just surprised me. Just look at the colour on these flowers. 
This is Osteosperna. It's one of my new favourites. And just look at how beautiful these ranunculus flowers are. My canna lilies from last year are bursting into life. And as you can see, there are new shoots coming up all over the place. Now, here's the grapevine. And as you can see, all of the buds are starting to open and we can see the new leaves. Interestingly enough, I've had this grapevine for a year, so we're going into year two now. I don't expect to have any grapes this year. Um, if I do, it would probably just be a small quantity. But my aim is to have it growing all the way over the arches and it's going to have a companion. Right next to it, I have got a melon. <laughs> And then here are the tomatoes. And to be honest, if I really wanted to, I could probably prolong the life of this tomato plant and chop it back because it is green, so it's still alive. I just think it might be time to just let it go and start afresh. Whereas the other plant, this one for definite is gone. But has some fruit on it. So I finally harvested the last of the tomatoes and it was, a, I can't lie, it was a very sad occasion for me. I was very attached to that cherry tomato plant. But in its place, I've been able to plant some beefsteak tomatoes and also another cherry tomato plant. Now I've also companion planted those tomato plants with some basil and those should distract any aphids or white fly. They were my main issues with the tomato plants last year. So hopefully, these guys should be a little bit more protected. Interestingly, let me show you some of the brassicas that I've got down at the end of the garden because I've noticed there's a really big change in some of those. So let's go down. This is a just a normal green cabbage, but as you can see, it's wilting. Um, the pots are bone dry on this side as well, actually. So I need to give these a good thorough watering. But here's what I wanted to show you. This is probably my oldest kale, it's around about six or seven months. But if you look in between, we can start to see that it's beginning to flower. And this plant is almost as tall as me. <laughs> now, these guys are so disrespectful. <laughs> these are my brassicas and every single one of them on this side of the garden have decided to bolt. But I don't mind because the flowers are absolutely beautiful. And as you can see, they could just continuously push out new growth, even after flowering. They flowered last year, and I kind of just left them. And as you can see, <laughs> they've come back again with a vengeance. And they'll keep producing new growth, so I can keep continuously harvesting them. Now, these peas, I sowed these, I think it was in December or January, and they got blown over in all of the storms and they're not following any rules so I've just decided to let them just do whatever they want. I also sowed some broad beans I think it was in January and December and as you can see they are now coming up with a vengeance. I also have some garlic and some beetroot which are really beginning to take on shape right about now. Now down the end of the garden I have another favorite area it's called the snug <laughs> and all it is is just a bucket with a cushion on in that bucket that's where I store my compost I love sitting on here and then looking back at the garden it just gives such an amazing view and that leads me to this hot mess which is my greenhouse Ooh, now, if you've been following me for a while, you know that I have my struggle bus area. And in the struggle bus area are all my unalived plants and ones that I nurse back into health. 
what I've ended up doing is moving most of the struggle bus area into the greenhouse and would you know it some of these plants have come back to life and I've popped them back out onto the garden and I've kept some inside now a lot of them were showing signs of new growth in January however what I didn't realize at the time was that my slugs were destroying everything so now that I've removed the slugs things are starting to get back on track again we're moving into spring that is an extremely common theme on the garden so my clematis my jasmine my canary bird creeper all of my vines are springing back into life i hope that this video has helped to inspire you to use your small space you know for me this garden is not just about beautiful flowers and you know some nice veg there's a real mental health aspect and I really do find being out here on the garden pottering away really does help me with my mental health but it's also really great to see how it affects the biodiversity within my urban area and then there's the added bonus of sustainability and growing some of my own veg which helps to reduce the amount of plastic that I bring in to my home I really hope that inspires more people to use whatever space that they have. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a like. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Hopefully, I will see you again soon. Bye! Let me know in the comments what surprised you most in this balcony garden tour. Hopefully, I'll see you again soon. Bye!